Yes, typically what happens is um, customers come to us, prospects come to us, say I really want to be able to make this, this part. Can I do it? Is this the right machine? What do I need to get it done? Um, and that's when we get letter uh, applications engineering staff takeover. Take a look, study what it is, the type of material, the length of the part, the volume that the customer wants to be able to run, and, and help them walk through that process to make that decision. Is this the right machine for them? Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. I'm standing here today with Ed Garber at the Star CNC booth at IMTS 2022. So Ed, how are you doing today? I'm good, I'm great. Nice, how's it feel to be back at technology shows? Uh, it's been a long wait, but it's been worth it, so. Yeah, yeah, it probably feels good. good to see everyone again. Oh yes. Yeah, it's been it's... getting a lot of uh, customers at your booth? Yeah, the activity's been much higher than we anticipated, and uh, it's good, high quality people. Um, yeah, yeah, it's been very good. Perfect. Yeah, I know it feels really good for me to be back at the shows. I kind of missed, missed it. You know, 2018 was the last one I attended. So. Yeah, no more uh, working from home. So yeah, yeah it's good to be back in <laughs> back in action. Yeah, back in action, great. yes. So uh, from my understanding, you know, you guys are at you have this fantastic booth at the largest trade show in North America, and you decided to bring your new machine model here, the SD26. Yes. So you guys are known for your Swiss style machines. Star is a well-known company. Why a new model? What does this provide for your end user? Uh, well, it's it's really an answer to uh, the demands from uh, our customers, and uh, the demands from the, from the new designs. You know, uh, this is uh, a lot of focus for the medical industry, and the parts continue to get more creative. Um, one of the other big things that we had to answer was customers were looking for a one-inch machine, which we haven't built in several years. So uh, we got together with the designers around the world and uh, worked with our uh, Japan headquarters to come up with this particular design to answer those questions yes. from the customers. Well, that's fantastic. So you take that customer feedback, you say, oh, you need that one inch, and you provide that platform for them. So here at the show, how well has this been received? Uh, I think it's the uh, sign on top of the machine that says new that gets everybody to come over here and look at this. But, um, you know, we just, it was a press release on September the 1st that really started to put the word out there. We've had to you know, hold on to this new design uh, for a long time. So um, this is a perfect opportunity. When people walk into the booth, it's right up front. Um, there's usually a crowd around this particular machine just to see what's going on. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, the buzz uh, traveled quickly. Everybody understood and everybody wants to come in and, and, our, and our distributors have done an awesome job getting people in here to see what it is and uh, what it's gonna bring to the market. And that, that buzz, has created a lot of interest, right? And you're getting orders, um, and you're taking orders over the next year, but deliveries are already pushed out a year. Yeah, we're not, uh, the machine is here really to, to show what the technology is, and um, this is our first machine that we built. It's the beta, I guess you could call it, um, and we're going into full build, uh, build mode very quickly here, um, but it'll be late summer, early fall next year before we can deliver the machines. Fantastic. So let's kind of dig more into the technical aspect of this machine. So with a machine like this, are you able to do gang, are you able to do guide bushing and non-guide bushing? Yes, yes, this machine is capable of doing that. And, and you know, it's been one of the things that's come about in the industry over the last 10 years is that capability to run either way. Mm -hmm. And it's really caught on and it's here to stay and it's very important that machines have this capability. And it's really just a matter of um, pulling the guide bushing unit out of the machine, the operator, your engineer, technician, whatever, Whatever person in that in your operation handles that kind of task, pull that out, set it on the workbench, um, change the keep relay in the control. It tells it I want to go into non-guide bushing mode. The um, main spindle then moves forward, fills the cavity where the guide bushing unit was, and now limits the travel in that Z direction so that at some point in time it doesn't come out of that cavity and allow oil and cutting chips to get back in the headstock room. So we can at that point in time we're able to run parts that have less than a, a three to one length to diameter ratio. So shorter parts, we don't have to depend on the guide bushing for to handle the rigidity aspect of machining at the support. Um, and to go backwards, to go back into guide bushing mode, uh, it's about the same operation, just in reverse, to go back to where you were before. So a lot of flexibility depending on the length of your part um, and the length of your stock. And then with something like this, I understand there's also a thread whirling advantage? Yes. Um, again, so this is an answer to some of the designs that we're seeing out there in the market. Um, the capability, this machine can run two thread whirling units at the same time um, with B-axis capability. So they can adjust to the different uh, the helix angles that are required. Um, for example, this, the sample part, I'm not sure if you can see it on this machine, 
um, was run with two different threads. So we've got a single start thread going into a double start thread. And it's done with those two different thread whirling units that are on the machine at one time. That is also, a, that's a cartridge unit. So we can pull that cartridge out of there. We can then put in uh, slotting attachments. We can put in high speed spindles. Uh, we can put in additional live tooling in there. There's a lot of things that we can do in that cartridge position. Fantastic. So speaking of live tooling, what, what can you get for live tooling on our main and sub spindle with this machine? Um, well, it's actually um, on the inside of here. It's difficult to see from here, but back behind the thread whirling unit, we've actually got four live cross working tools in there, and those are cartridge positions for you want to go to maybe an ER11 as opposed to ER16 or some other different configurations. Um, it's got that capability. It's also got the B-axis unit in here that has four tools facing each direction. So that is fully programmable, surfacing axis, um, and it's got, uh, it's got the capability to swing, I believe it's 135 and a half degrees to be able to swing on that unit. So besides that, and that's both directions, we also have um, a drill arm right there is what we call it, to be able to do um, static working both front and back. If you needed to go live on that, we can go to electric spindles, high-speed spindles to handle more um, capability there. And on the main spindle, we also have turning tools on there. We've got turning tools down below the, the uh, whirling axis, and then we've got an additional two tools, two tools on the back side of the platen. Um, we've got a lot more capability on the subspindle as well, but that's what's tied into the main. I also want to point out that on that B-axis unit, we can be using, with tools facing the subspindle, we can be using that B-axis for uh, machining on the subspindle as well. Fantastic. So really a lot of versatility. You can do guide bushing, non-guide bushing. You can do thread whirling, gang tooling, live tooling. It's uh, You listen to your customers, you heard what they had to say, and you developed the SD26. Yes, that's accurate. Now we also, again, with um, the back working, so again, with more demands from, uh, from our customers and listening to what they have to say, we've got eight back working positions back here. All eight of those can be live or static, any combination. And you can see the four, three of them in this situation have live cross-working tools in there. We can get four live cross-working tools back there. We've also got a position right here that holds two turning tools that are focused primarily on the subspinal. Fantastic. So from the customer aspect, you know, do they want live? Do they want static? This is something that your sales engineers will work through them and fulfill their needs in whatever works for them. Yes. Typically what happens is um, customers come to us, prospects come to us, say, I really want to be able to make this, this part. Can I do it? Is this the right machine? What do I need to get it done? Um, and that's when we get to let our uh, applications engineering staff take over, take a look, study what it is, the type of material, the length of the part, the volume that the customer wants to be able to run, and, and help them walk through that process to make that decision. Is this the right machine for them? Well, that sounds great. Thanks uh, for taking the time to talk to us Absolutely. Today. Thank you for the opportunity. So, yep, looks like a phenomenal machine and a beautiful booth. So, yes. Thank you. Thanks, guys.